Hello everyone, I'm Epsilon9, and yes, the game you're seeing right now is indeed No Man's Sky. So you don't get to see the title screen, but apparently that only pops up the first time you're loading. And when you're loading, you have to see a zooming of stars for two straight freaking minutes. And the reason why I'm on my second time around on this is because when I booted up recently, I ran into a little bug that I recall running into the first time, completely forgot about, would have assumed they fixed that bug, Clearly they did not, where if you're following the objectives, at one point the game tells you to build a warp drive. Specifically it says, you're going to need to build a warp drive, and in order to do that, you're going to need to get this item. Okay, so I go and get that item, and then I build the warp drive. And then after I build the warp drive, then the notification pops up, great, now that you have that item, use it to build the warp drive. Except since you already built the warp drive, and you use the one item, Specifically, you use the item that was a little hard to get, and you use the item that's virtually impossible to get without the objective giving it to you in the first place. So, you can either grind for several hours to get the one item, and pray that within the next couple days of grinding, weeks, months, whatever, that you get the other item, or you can just restart and lose the first, like, three hours of progress. Which I did. But Epsilon, doesn't No Man's Sky suck? Well, Internet Commenter... Yeah, it sucked the first time it came out because it made huge promises, didn't deliver on a goddamn one of them. Well, delivered on like one or two, not ones we were particularly looking forward to. But since then, three huge updates have come out. And specifically on the third one, which came out roughly a year after the game's initial release, I can, I've been hearing some uh, good murmurings. Some things that's saying, hey, this isn't quite the game we were promised, but it's a lot closer to what we were promised. Got land vehicles, and we got base building. You can own multiple ships now. I'm looking forward to that. I'm not going to do that on my first playthrough. I'm going to go around getting the Atlas passes, which are like the keys in this game. Because goddammit, I hate locked doors and locked chests. I want to get all the keys right off the bat so I don't have to deal with that. I understand having th stuff locked is a major gameplay mechanic in most games. I just personally don't like it. That's just on me. I like having access to everything right away. Personal preference. So yeah, I'm going to go through uh, the Atlas Pass, get all the uh, Atlas Passes. Then I'm going to go to the center of the galaxy, which I supposedly is going to restart the game, but it's, all of my stuff's going to carry over into quote-unquote New Game Plus. And then I'll be able to do all the other stuff, such as saving up to build multiple ships, getting land vehicles, setting up a base on a home planet. And at that point, I'll actually be taking naming stuff seriously. I will tell you this, there is currently a planet in No Man's Sky called Pickle Rick. But Epsilon, didn't you say in your last video that your next video is going to be you talking about Persona 5? Thank you for having watched my last video. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yes, there is a concept in the Let's Play community known as a Drownout, which is you take a game in which not a lot of interesting stuff happens, and you just ramble about something completely irrelevant over top of it. And I figured you might want to watch me play No Man's Sky rather than just watch my dopey marshmallow head flapping at you for 20 or so minutes talking about Persona 5. You're welcome. Now, I did not play P3. Well, I played P3 a little bit. Couldn't get on the mechanics because I played P4 first. So I'm not going to comment on Persona 3. Persona 4, I played a lot. Persona 4 The Golden, I played a lot. And since Persona 4 The Golden is just P4 with a lot more stuff tacked on, a good chunk of which carried on into the creation of P5, I will be comparing P4G to P5. Now, which of the two is the better game, you might ask? Can't really say one's better than the other. I personally prefer P5, but if someone says, well, P4 is way better, you're not wrong. You can't say you're right, but you're not wrong. P4 has a lot of things that outshine P5, but P5's got a lot of things that outshine P4 on. Goddamn, the game is just dripping with style. The menus, the various different um, gameplay mechanics, such as the stealth mechanic and the various all-out attacks. Did I mention the menus? Oh my god, I love menus. And while P4 had a great soundtrack, I really, really like P5 soundtrack. Also, I like the fact that the, uh, your characters all have access to guns now. Love it. RPGs need more guns. 
They just do. I'm, I'm sick and tired of always the swords and sorcery and the axes and the spears and blah, blah, blah. Just, just toss in some guns. There's, you got so much variety with the guns. Just do the guns, man. Anyway, uh, so what's the best place to start off with on talking about a game like Persona? Mm, probably the story. Now, the story overall, yeah, I liked it. You have, like, the, the general main story, which, um... Okay, in P4, the main thing was you had the mystery of finding out who the killer was. I will not spoil that, because they did a really good job of hiding it, and I still say people need to go out and play Persona 4. Got a buddy at work who's trying to play it, but busy family life, you know, responsible adults, eh. P5, it had the overall plot, which was completely separate from f solving its own mystery of who's the traitor, because most of the game takes place in flashback, where it shows you performing a heist, you get captured, and then, like, some rando cop says, yeah, you were sold out by one of your friends, and then, uh, like, most of the game is, like, replayed through an interrogation. Now, I was looking forward to solving the mystery of who the traitor is, and I'm going to get that right out of the way first. I'm not going to say specifically who it is, because if you don't figure out who it is, as soon as he shows up on screen, you're kind of stupid. Because when he shows up on screen, he pretty much just announces, hey, I'm going to be the traitor. And I see this, I'm like, no, you could not have dropped the ball this hard on revealing who the traitor is. You did such a good job in 4 of hiding who the killer was. And so I hopped online, and yeah, it wasn't a red herring. They, he just pretty much just comes out and just drops that big, blunt-ass hint, I'm the traitor. And you know what that hint was? He heard pancakes. That's it. The, the traitor heard pancakes. You probably wouldn't have guessed that he was going to be the traitor anyways, like, or at the very fact, at least you could have actually, like, had, snuck in a couple more red herrings to, like, maybe cast suspicion on some of your other, other friends. But no. The traitor heard pancakes, and that was his undoing. Which, in hindsight, is kind of hilarious, and now I can appreciate all those memes all the more. But, yeah. The mystery of who the traitor's going to be? Not a mystery. It's light from Death Note. As soon as someone pointed that out to me, holy crap, now I can't help but see light from Death Note every time I look at that piece of crap. As for the overall story, uh, it gets darker at points. It, it comes out like right strong in the bat with like a, a sexually abusive, physically abusive, psychologically abusive teacher who even drives one girl to try and commit suicide. Damn, that's dark. It never quite gets quite as dark uh, from that point onwards, even though I hear a lot of people saying, it's like, all the subsequent villains are even more evil than the first guy. Which, yeah, you could argue that. I, I, I personally think that there's like one or two like aspects of each subsequent uh, boss that makes them more evil than the first one. But then again, you got some people who think that, like, sex crimes are, like, far more evil than pretty much any other crime out there, so... It, it, it's getting into a gray area that I'd rather not get into, thank you. Let's gotta, let's, gotta, let's keep this a little light-hearted of a review of my experience playing through the first game. Oh, yeah. Persona, much like a lot of games, info should be played through multiple times. Because of New Game Plus, a lot of stuff carries over after the first time you beat it. When I played it... I knew that there was three endings. I knew that there was a bad ending, which I did not get, because I'm not stupid. Had to watch that on YouTube. Wow. That's dark. Your character just gets straight up shot in the head and framed for murder. Like, you see the bullet hole and, like, the blood splatter and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Wow. Sick. Uh, then you also had the good ending, and you have the true ending. Now, I was I, I went for the, the good ending on my first playthrough because, like, why am I going to get the best ending first and then try for the second best ending on my second playthrough? Go for the weaker end. Go for the weaker of the two endings on your first playthrough. 
Also, because I went for the week or the two, that means I wrapped up the game like three months earlier. Three in-game months earlier. Maybe even more, I'm not sure. But I did have Nier Tom to get playing on. I'll probably do that in a subsequent episode of uh, the No Man's Sky Drown Out. Uh, yeah. So, as for the rest of the story, is the villains were, each one of the bosses, I liked. The douchebag right at the start who was responsible for uh, your character's interrogation before um, the lady shows up. I'm not going to get too deep into who she is. Um, kind of surprised that he doesn't become a boss. Because, like, they set him up. They set him up to be a real big douchebag. They give him a voice actor and everything. He's one of the first, like, actual characters you see aside from your main character. And yet he never gets a name. He never gets, like, properly addressed. Kind of disappointing if you ask me. About as disappointing as uh, the tr- the traitor revealing himself, like before you, probably even before you uh, reveal his name. Actually, it, it gets revealed really early on, uh, and definitely about as disappointing as one tiny little aspect about the main human bad guy, because. It's not a spoiler at this point, because if you play any game like Persona, you know this. It's like, it's building up, it's like, oh, he's the bad guy. This human dude in this psychological, supernatural type thing is the main bad guy. He's the final boss. And then you beat him, and it's like, the game carries on for several more hours afterwards. It's like, yep, definitely the final boss. No one after him. Th- there's something after him, and God knows it's a freaking god. It happened in the last games, it happens in this one. N- not a surprise. The, the the aspect about the, the final human bad guy is they set him up to be the guy who was behind every crime your characters run into up until this point. Because you have, like, the mini-bosses in Mementos, which are, like, the side quests. He, he didn't have any direct uh, correlation to those. Those guys were just randos. But pretty much every major boss you fight up until then, he had a hand in. Which, oh yeah, the the principal in your school, super surprised he doesn't become a boss fight later. I was totally pegging that guy to be like a boss, like a shadow boss. Like a guy who like holds a relatively like lower position of authority in society, but then it turns out he's like a Moriarty. And he's actually like this big time villain. He's the one who's behind everything. I was expecting that guy to turn out to be Moriarty, basically. But no, the guy who's the super big-time politician, which, God knows, if you hadn't, like, figured out that he was going to be the main bad guy, well, you again, you haven't been paying attention to the game. So, you got the one guy, the head of the Burger Corporation. Okay, it's obvious why he... It's obvious how those two were connected. Uh, it's obvious how, um, he was ancillary connected to the first boss, because he had a connection to the school. He had a connection to the one doctor's murder, so that makes sense. He had a connection with your character, like, because he, he's the guy who winds up setting you up for assault and winds up getting your main character a cr- criminal record. Okay, that, the fact is, like, any one of these... Some of those are coincidences, some of those just only make sense. But the fact that you uh, swirl them all together, that's when it starts getting convoluted. When the fact is that he has ties with uh, that that Yakuza money launderer, or that uh, scam artist, or whatever the heck you want to call him, that gets even more convoluted. The fact that he had a connection to the freaking artist, my god! The artist, if anyone could have been just a standalone, by-himself criminal, it could have and probably should have been him. Absolutely should have been him. But then again, it's like because of the fact that he was like roped into all the other criminals, it would have been a little odd that that was the one man out. But you know what? That could have been like a uh, something you could have played up to be a red herring for the traitor because of the fact that like all the other guys in your party have a direct connection to to that main bad guy, except for this one dude. And it's like, hmm, maybe that could have been, like, written to be a little bit suspicious. Nope. Now, I'm not saying I don't like the main bad guy because he's Armstrong from Metal Gear Rising. I got spoiled on that, like, way early in the game because I was just... 
I wanted to know, like, what... Because I heard, like, a bunch of the good songs, like, right off the bat from Persona 5. And I wanted to see, like, what were some of the other good songs. And I got to hear Rivers in the Desert. Damn, I love that song. And me, because I don't really care about spoilers, I started scrolling through the comments. And I hear one guy say, Oh, it's a real shame that this awesome song's just wasted on that lame-o boss. I'm like, oh no, is one of the bosses lame? Because, like, he... I, I, the boss designs I feel were actually pretty good and then one guy says dude the boss fights just aren't from I'm like excuse me probably my favorite boss fight in all of video games is gonna be the final boss of Persona 5 so then I check it out and I like right off that it's like oh so he's a politician who wants to make his country great again and doesn't care who he steps on to do it okay that's pretty similar and when you first fight him he's just kind of piloting a giant mechanical monster Okay, and then after you beat the mechanical monster, then he pops off, rips off his shirt, and he's ripped to crap. Oh my god, it really is just Armstrong. And so I figure, well, I'll listen to Rivers in the Desert until I get tired of it. Spoiler alert, I didn't. Still love that song. And then I'll just play the Metal Gear Rising soundtrack when it gets time to fighting that boss, because... Yeah, JRPG bosses usually take a while, especially, like, later bosses, especially on your first try. So, I was playing through it, and, like, I I get to the point where he just first rips his shirt off for the first time, and I'm not on It Has to Be This Way. God damn it, I know that's not the title of the song. It's the one in the soundtrack that comes after Collective Consciousness, the one that actually plays when you're fighting Armstrong for the final time at the end of Metal Gear Rising. That's the song I wanted to play when I was fighting him. Didn't get to it, and figured, oh, well... Uh, still. But then, after when it looks like he's about to fall over, and then he just flexes and he rips all that metal crap off him, and he's even more ripped than before, and he's got a red ore, I'm like, yes! That's Armstrong! That's Nano Machine, son! And then the song starts playing, I'm like, yes! Yes, this is what I wanted! And I'm so freaking glad I took my entire party on that fight, because wanting to go in... And fight him with just my main character, like Raiden versus Armstrong. I wanted that to be the case. But then, like, uh, the boss fight just before him, it was like, How? How could you beat me? I, I'm so much better than you. And it's like, Yeah, but I got friends! Ugh, alright. Yeah, yeah, so literally the only reason why I beat this one guy is because I had my friends. So I guess it's only thematically appropriate that I take my friends to fight the final boss. And like I said, so glad I did. <laughs> Because I was just using my friends until they ran freaking dry, just spamming out their most powerful attacks until they started running low on SP, in which case I swapped them out. I love you, Hifumi. I love that you gave me that ability. I'll get to her uh, when I start talking about the confidants. I'm already like 18 minutes into this, so I'll probably do that in the next video. But man, that boss was freaking tough. Uh, so yeah, after I took care of him, then uh, my new final boss on my second playthrough is going to be the true final boss for the true ending, and then I'll probably play the game a third time and beat Justine and Caroline, who are like apparently the toughest fight that you'll ever experience in the game. Apparently the only uh, guy who could be tougher than those two is Reaper, unless you fight him during flu season, in which case you just have to survive three turns. I might be looking forward to that uh, encounter, because that's a really good way to farm experience. But I think this episode's gone on long enough. I'll continue talking about Persona 5 in the next episode.